Hello, everyone, and welcome to Critical Issues in Criminal Justice, CJ447, here at uh, Thomas College. Uh, just wanted to go over a little bit of introduction to you and welcome you to your capstone course for the criminal justice program. Being in this, uh, in this course means that uh, you're at least a junior, and so therefore you have uh, already been through most of the core classes in criminal justice, and this course will assume that you have gone through those courses and that you have mastered uh, most of the critical concepts uh, within those courses. So what this course is designed for is actually to allow you to demonstrate your not only competency, but your mastery of those subjects. And so um, what we'll talk about uh, throughout the semester is the ongoing critical issues within the criminal justice system. I know you've seen them all on television. Um, I know some of you have witnessed them firsthand. Uh, so we will be talking about all of those incidents. And what I want you to do is I want you to be free to open up in class um, I'm going to lecture on video and post those to Moodle, but what I really want is I really want you to be participate, participate in the discussions in class. Um, that is the only way that this class uh, takes off and flourishes, so um, please come into class ready to participate in the discussion that we plan on talking about that day and come prepared, bringing whatever it is that you want to talk about um, that is a critical issue in criminal justice. Um, I'm gonna go over the course objectives uh, just briefly so that you can uh, have an idea what uh, is expected of you uh, coming out of this course. Uh, you will be expected to identify the importance and the impact of crime and the criminal justice system to the American democratic society. So that's a lot of words to say that as a democratic society, we have chosen to have a criminal justice system as a means of um, control on society. So we, as the criminal, as people in the criminal justice system, we don't exist without the consent of the governed. We don't consent, uh, we don't exist without the consent of the general public. And in my lifetime, I've never seen such a, um, such a challenge to that um, authority that is given by the public and that challenge coming from the public. So um, we are in, I can't say unprecedented times because I know uh, we have been through this pendulum swing in the past. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that we'll talk about uh, this semester is that pendulum swing that was um, introduced uh, as a criminal justice concept back in 1964. And um, we're going to talk about how that um, is playing out today. Um, basically looking at the due process model versus the crime control model of criminal justice and how how can we as the as members of the criminal justice system make reforms that are meaningful yet still control the crime within society to the point where society is um, happy with what they're getting for their uh, tax dollars and so that they uh, support not only law enforcement, because the criminal justice system is so much more than law enforcement, but support law enforcement, the courts, the correctional officers and the correction system, the probation, parole systems, community corrections, um, even the private um, security, private uh, sector, uh, enforcement that uh, goes on every day in, in the United States. So that's a major issue, one of the course objectives uh, here. 
Um, you'll be able to discuss the political, social, economic, and legal issues that impact the functional components of the American criminal justice system and how they foster co cooperation and conflict. Well, that's what we just got done talking about is that conflict issue. Um, we have uh, seen a political system that has been, again, unprecedented in my lifetime, uh, divided between liberal and conservative to the point where virtually nothing gets done outside of executive order, uh, meaning that the legislative system is getting nowhere because both sides are so polarized that they can't come to an agreement on anything. And so um, for the last, uh, well, three years under President Trump and eight years under President Obama, we have existed basically off from executive orders, meaning that the executive branch, the president, is creating pseudo law by executive order, which can be nullified when the next president takes office. And so it's only good temporarily and therefore is a very short term fix, um, basically like putting a Band-Aid on a open chest wound. So um, we as a society need to learn to come back together um, to be able to meet each other where we, uh, where we agree, but be able to disagree with the issues that we disagree on. So a bill that is put through Congress can get through based on common uh, objectives. And so um, that's a big part of that um, political side that we, we see every day. Thirdly, um, you'll be able to identify how the American criminal justice system impacts crime, constitutional rights, and the community quality of life. So that is that um, fabric of society that uh, we have talked about over and over in different classes that you've had in, in the criminal justice field and um, how the criminal justice system actually operates and identifies those constitutional rights and lives within those constitutional rights with society to create a um, community that is uh, effective for the majority in that community. So um, that is um, course objective number three. Course objective number four, describe and discuss the cultural and diversity issues that impact and are impacted by crime and the criminal justice system. So I would venture to say that most of you have uh, witnessed an increase in the uh, issues of diversity that have popped up through your lifetime as they have through mine. Um, mine slightly longer than yours, but um, nonetheless, uh, they have crept up and are now um, probably at a point where I haven't seen them in probably 40 years. So um, I'm giving away that much of my age, but uh, that's about it. So um, those uh, cultural and diversity issues that we're facing uh, are significant, they're real, and we must face them head on as a criminal justice system, or we'll lose the support and the respect of the communities that um, are marginalized. So um, that is a major topic that we'll discuss. Most of you probably had uh, me for criminal, uh, for uh, multicultural issues and criminal justice. This is a lot of what we talked about in there, but now that we're seeing it hyper-focused on the news every single day, 
um, you um, you may have a, a slightly different perspective and and that's what we want to talk about in this course we want those different perspectives brought out and we want to flesh them out so um, the fifth course objective is to identify and discuss landmark criminal justice cases that were influenced by the criminal justice system. And so these, um, these landmark criminal justice uh, court cases are court cases that come out of the Supreme Court and have had a major impact on the lives of everyday citizens and those of us within the criminal justice system and how we perform our duties. So um, just as a, as a quick example, if you look at Miranda v. Arizona, um, that court case has had major significance within the criminal justice system in that it provided a, uh, an individual's rights, um, specifically their right against self-incrimination to be told to them um, upon their uh, custodial interrogation. So I say that custodial interrogation, not upon their arrest, um, because there's no requirement to, um, for a police officer to uh, Mirandize or provide the Miranda warnings to a person under arrest. It is only when that person is in custody and that custody has been defined by the courts as when they feel like they don't have the right to leave and leave the, uh, the uh, officer's presence. And the second um, part of that besides custody is interrogation. And that's where so many people fail to realize that unless you're questioning a suspect, um, or someone that's under uh, arrest or uh, custody, there's no need to provide them Miranda because you're not, you're not asking them questions to elicit responses. So therefore you can, uh, a person can be arrested and taken into custody and um, put in the back of the cruiser, taken to, to um, the jail and at no time be Mirandized, and that's not a violation of Miranda. It's only a violation of Miranda if you are um, uh, asking that person questions while they're in custody. And the sixth and final course objective is to generate a, um, pr basically an in-depth research uh, on, criminal just uh, on a criminal justice issue. Um, that is something that you are going to do as part of this course. You're going to write a um, paper that will uh, cover a major criminal justice issue. Hopefully something that's going on now, but it can be something that has gone on in the past. So we've, we've seen so many um, landmark cases come out of the Supreme Court that have affected the way the criminal justice system operates. Um, you can look at juvenile justice and how uh, juveniles were never um, afforded the um, right to an attorney. You can look at where juveniles were um, sentenced to death um, for a uh, crime that they committed as a juvenile that has uh, gone away with the with Supreme Court decisions. So those are the types of critical issues that um, we're looking at when you're doing your research project. So I want to uh, see that you have um, mastered the uh, abilities within the system and that you can um, create a research project that is um, significant and culturally relevant to the times and that you uh, understand its um, implementation within the system. So those are the six objectives of the, the uh, course. 
and there's going to be a few lectures that I'll do on video in this course, um, but they'll be few and far between. The majority of this course is going to be discussion based in class and with um, ongoing um, uh, discussion forums on Moodle. So that's how we will uh, operate. Just so you know what the uh, breakdown is for grading, the Capstone course project, which I just talked about, uh, will be worth 20% of your grade. Your presentation in defense of that course project uh, will be 20% of your grade. So yes, you will be presenting this at the end of the semester. You'll be presenting it to your uh, fellow students as well as um, professors from the criminal justice program and potentially some from outside the program. So it depends on who's available to come and uh, participate in those um, um, presentation and defenses. Your third item of uh, grading will be those discussion forums, which I just talked about. So each week we will, most weeks, we will do a discussion forum. It will be posted on Moodle for you to submit your responses. To, uh, questions will be submitted. Um, that you will respond to by Thursday night at midnight. Um, after that, you will respond to at least two other posts by Friday night at midnight. And then by Sunday night at midnight, I expect that you will go in and respond to those people who have responded to your, um, your discussion forum. This is a way to keep ongoing discussion going when we're not in class. So as you know, uh, we are meeting and um, we are meeting face to face. Those will be basically be discussion for uh, discussions in class. And then these discussion forums take place out of class. The fourth component of your uh, grading will be student assessment will be your capstone comprehensive examination. So at the end of the semester, you will take an exam. Actually, it'll probably be before the end of the semester. It'll probably be just before uh, Thanksgiving, if I remember correctly. And um, we will um, complete that um, comprehensive um, capstone examination. Um, and that is also worth 20% of your grade. And then attendance and class participation. Um, I value uh, you to be in class and I value your participation in that class. Barring those two things, this is 20% of your grade. So if you're not in class, your grade goes down significantly. We're only meeting um, during the week and then we're participating online with the uh, discussion forums. I expect that you will participate in both uh, parts of that fully. And again, that is 20% of your grade. So each one of the five components are worth 20% of your grade for your 100% um, final grade. If you have any questions, I am right in AL 217, right across the hall from um, the main classrooms of AL 208 and AL 209. Uh, I am available most of the time. And if you can, if I'm not there, my cell phone number is on the syllabus. You can uh, text me or call me anytime. Um, if you have questions, if you just want to talk about something, if you want to run an idea past me, if you want to talk about grad school, whatever you want to talk about, um, I am available and um, I'm here for you. So I'm looking forward to a great semester. I think we're going to uh, I think we're going to do. Um, great things this year. We have a we have an awesome senior class, um, and you guys are a representation of that as the um, as the members of the capstone course. And so I am so looking forward to this class. Um, this is my probably my favorite class to teach because it is um, informed in so much. Um, done by you um, based on your years of experience in the program. So thank you very much and um, 
look forward to a great semester.